So far, so satisfactory. Will you take a port, sir? No. Madeira, sir? Nothing. As you will, sir. So, gentlemen, how do you feel now? Well, thanks to me, you have rid the world of General Cheeseman, a power-crazed autocrat, and of Captain Trevor, that black-hearted shark of the sea lanes. Is this not a worthier occupation than preying on innocence like Clarence Green? Yes, indeed. Then uh, this is your purpose, to deal with retribution when the law is deficient. Yes, that is my purpose for the present. Take Sir Courtney Massingbird. A pillar of the economy. Ah, yes, yes, I've played bridge with him. A gentleman of means who founded his fortune upon the importing and distribution of prunes. Massing word prunes, of course. Who could be more respectable? Who could be more worthy of society's approbation? <laughs> yet he, even he, is guilty of a crime so monstrous that it is yet to be brought within the compass of the law. Oh, what? Go on. An act so vile that it may not be described even here within these crime-soaked walls. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, yes, I shall be glad to learn the manner of his passing. Who was charged with the dispatch of Sir Courtney Massingbird? Uh, Miss Walcott and Mrs Pigeon. Yes, that's right. It was us. No, Pigeon, it was we. The compliment is in the nominative. Isn't that a little pedantic, Livia? Oh, I do hope. Enough of this petty squabbling. The sands run through. Have you accomplished the task that I set you? Of course. And more. Hush. No, no. I'm keen to hear every aspect of your undertaking. Then let Mrs. Pigeon, my constant companion and chronicler these past 15 years, recount the tale in her usual grandiose manner. <laughs> The Fall of the Mausoleum Club, written by James Hendry and Ian Brown, starring Peggy Mount, Dorothy Tutin, Hugh Paddock and Jonathan Cecil. Episode 4, The Prune Stone. My name is Mrs Eustacia Pigeon, lately teacher of calisthenics and hygiene at Lady Jane Grey College for the Daughters of Service. Just Men. get on with it, Pigeon. But I am best known as the constant companion of the celebrated classics detective, Miss Livia Walcott. Late teacher of Latin prose and verse composition at a variety of feminine gymnasia. Just get on with it, madam. No. Oh. Uh, you may have read my accounts in the Strand magazine of such notorious cases as the affair of the murdered subjunctive, the case of the butchered meter, and the adventures of the misplaced gerundive. Which baffled the police of their day as much as Pigeon's convoluted prose style. I understood, Livia, that you wished me to get on with it. Yes, yes. As ladies well known in society, an invitation to Massingbird Hall was not hard to procure. I say, driver, stop here. Eh? We'll walk the rest of the way. But it's almost a hundred yards. Well, you're a gym teacher, aren't you? Well, you're a Latin teacher. When did you last speak to a Roman? Si vis me fliere dolendum est primum mipsitibi. Pardon? Come on. I want to get a good look at the grounds. Ooh. Ah, the great country houses of England. Well-tended lawns, fountains, carp... Oops, mind you, don't tread on that dead tramp. Oh! Topiary, peacocks, and here the master of the house waiting on the steps to greet us in person. Welcome to Massingburn Hall, ladies. <laughs> Have a prune, won't you? Oh, yes, please. No, thank you. It would mar our appetites for dinner. I think my appetite could probably survive a marring. I dare say. Will you show us to our room, Sir Courtney? Of course, Miss Wilcott. Um... There are, of course, a number of other house guests. My son Horace is lodging with me at present. Then we have Mr. Taylor, a local gentleman, and Captain Carver of the regiment and his lady. But, of course, we'll meet them all at dinner. Oh, good. Excellent. Yes, I think you'll like my friends. What friends? Oh. I say... Are you really detectives? Yes. How absolutely fascinating. Perhaps you could help me find my missing monocle. Certainly. It is resting in my brown Windsor. 
Oh, 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 so it is. Gosh, how astonishing. Did you see that, Captain Carver? Yes. Wasn't it the most extraordinary thing you've ever seen? Yes. More soup, Carver? No. Yes. Yeah. I'd like some more, too. Pigeon. I say, you're a pigeon, are you? Well, I'm a bit of a pigeon fancier. <laughs> Do you speak pigeon English? <laughs> I could send you a Billy Doo by pigeon post, my <laughs> bluff little pigeon. Don't be such an ass, Taylor. No, no, it's not of the slightest consequence. I assure you, my companion is somewhat ample. There you are, you see. I like a bit of meat on my bird. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think perhaps it's time for the ladies to withdraw. But, Father, we're only on the soup. Yes, that's all there is. Someone appears to have cleaned out the pantry. Pigeon? Uh, it was just a snack. Uh, I, I think I'll withdraw. Is it this way? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, now the ladies have gone, I think we may let off steam a bit with some ripe gentleman's story. <laughs> <laughs> I came across an amusing anecdote just the other day. Oh, I say, what you think? Yeah. While leafing through the Tusculani Disputationes, it seems a young man returned to the family farm after a year away at war. Yes. And he went up to his father and said, Father... And then the 14th old man gave the father three geese, saying, Take these, sir, uh, it may do thee good. <laughs> to which the, the boy's father replied, <laughs> Sealant enim leges inter arma. <laughs> Yes, perhaps it's time for the gentleman to withdraw. Yeah, I, I think so. Well, of course, the young man wasn't having any of this. At length, at great length, we repaired to our room and considered how best to hasten the demise of Sir Courtney Massingbird. Phew, that was a near thing, Livia. What was, Pigeon? That dreadful Mr Taylor has been pressing his attentions on me all evening. Oh. I've only just got rid of him. Good night, sweet <laughs> ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Mr Taylor. Phew. Well, did you find out anything useful? Yes. Chef's making an iced plum cake for tomorrow's tea. No, no. I meant, did you find out anything that will help us to dispatch Sir Courtney and escape unpunished? Oh, I see. No. Well, no matter. We'll do the deed and set a false trail afterwards. It wouldn't be the first time. Oh. So, what's it to be? Something with a classical flavour? Oh, of course, Livia. Then, what about mushrooms? Oh, no, I couldn't eat another thing. Not you, Sir Courtney. We'll poison him with mushrooms. Ah. Do you not recall the exploits of Augustus's wife, my namesake? Walcott? No, Livia. Oh, why do I bother? What about hemlock? Hmm? No, too slow, I fear. I want to be away by tomorrow. Oh, but the iced plum cake. This is not an enjoyable task, but as Cicero says, Yacundi acti labores. Huh? Completed labours are pleasant. Do you know any quotes about P.E.? Apply your mind to the deed. I know. Why don't we drop a tortoise on his head, you know, like Euripides? It was Aeschylus. And where are we going to find a tortoise at this time of night? Near Bristol. What? I believe there is a zoological garden. Oh, pish tush. Or we could contrive to shoot a poisoned arrow into his heel. I know. The asp. No, it was the heel. An asp concealed in a bouquet of flowers. I'd have thought a tortoise easier to find than an asp. Pigeon, pass me my suetonium. Less noise, Pigeon. You wake the Courtney. I can't help it. It's my stomach. But you've just had an enormous dinner. That was four hours ago. It's looking forward to its breakfast now. Oh, really? These are Sir Courtney's boots, so this will be his room. Ah. Pigeon. It was the door. Mm. <laughs> oh, there's our man sleeping the sleep of the just. Ah, the just about to die. How fitting. An old libertine smothered in his chamber by an embroidered cushion. But this time Tiberius Caligula shall not fail. Pigeon, hand me the weapon. Well, you will be quick, won't you? Of course. I haven't finished embroidering it. Yes, yes. 
Now we place the gentle agent of destruction over that gaping mouth and treacherous nose and just press down and... <laughs> oh. Oh. What, what, what is it? What's, what's happening? Oh, oh, oh. Hello, ladies. What on earth are you doing here? Well... It's like this, you see, we um, were... We heard a scream and came to see if you were all right. Yes. Ah, well, that's very thoughtful of you. Sir Courtney, <laughs> Sir Courtney, I... Oh, excuse me, ladies. Well, what the bist is going on? Well, it seems there's been a most unfortunate incident, sir. Incident, man? It's Mr. Taylor, sir. He's been murdered. Oh. Well, it wasn't us. Ah. I think we'll find out the culprit soon enough, eh, ladies? I, I don't know what you mean. With such a celebrated pair of detectives in the house. Hmm? Uh, yes, uh, indeed. And our first task must be to view the body. We entered Mr. Taylor's room, and I must confess, it was no easy task to hold my gaze upon the grisly tableau that greeted us. Everyone else kept jostling for a look. The unfortunate tailor was slumped over a folio of artistic views of Paris. <laughs> His scrawny, betalcomed gizzard, constricted horribly by a thin leather cord, Mr. Taylor was indeed dead, throttled by his own monocle. How ghastly! Yeah. Quilch! Yes, sir? Who discovered the body? Katie, the chambermaid, sir. Indeed. Mm. The first question I might ask is what she meant by entering Mr. Taylor's room at such an unseemly hour. Well, we need hardly look far for the answer to that one. <laughs> I don't follow. <laughs> well, uh, no matter. The police must be called and the proprietors observed. See to it, Quilch. Very good, sir. And I suggest we all go back to our rooms and make up for lost sleep. Um, off you go. Um, oh, 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 Miss Walcott, Mrs. Pigeon. Yes? Don't think I don't know what you were up to in my room. Oh, I, um... He's tumbled us, Livia. And uh, what were we up to, Sir Courtney? Well, uh, I would guess that you and Miss Pigeon have certain designs upon my person. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, very well. It's no use hiding it. <laughs> we have. Hmm. Yes, the mausoleum carpet. <laughs> That's my girls. <laughs> See you tomorrow night when the fuss die down. I leave me door unlocked. <laughs> Well, it's an ill wind that blows no good. The disturbing events of that busy night meant that few of the household had the stomach for breakfast. What have you got left then, Quelch? We have kedgery, kippers, porridge, deviled kidneys, an assortment of grilled meats and, of course, prunes. Splendid. That will do. Very good, madam. So, Olivia, who do you think did for Mr Taylor? Well... As usual, I've drawn up a list of the suspects. There's Katie, the chambermaid, Horace, the quick-tempered son of the house, the taciturn Captain Carver, his lady, and, of course, Sir Courtney himself. What about us? Oh, don't be stupid, Pigeon. We're the detectives. Oh, very well. Which of the people on that list would wish to kill Mr Taylor? I don't know. Let's just say the butler did it. What, Quelch? <laughs> Who would believe that? Everyone. Everyone believes what we say. Do they? Naturally, because we've always been right in the past. No, we haven't. Perhaps not. But everyone believes what we say. Yes. Yes, they do. Even that time when we had to tamper with the evidence to suit our conclusions. Ah, yes. You are referring to the case of the unholy conjugation? No, it was the case of the irregular ending. Or was it the declension into hell adventure? One has to admit we have done it with embarrassing frequency. Well... One has a certain reputation and a living to maintain. Indeed. The butler it is, then. Your breakfast, madam. No quelch. You are. <laughs> that morning promised to be a busy one. First, we had to defend our detective reputations by implicating the butler in the murder of Mr Taylor. Then we had to contrive the destruction of Sir Courtney and escape unpunished. Under the guise of investigating the mystery, we set out to survey the grounds of Massingbird Hall. A visit from the constabulary was imminent, and it was our intention to help their inquiry in such a way as to make the butler's guilt seem undoubted. Mm. 
but whilst examining the east wing from the Dutch garden, we were inconveniently surprised. Uh, a magnificent prospect, ladies. All paid for by prunes. Ah, oh, Sir Courtney. I trust you've remembered your riding gear. Oh! There's to be a hunt this afternoon. A hunt? Given the circumstances, might not blood sport appear somewhat tasteless? No. Couldn't stand the chap myself. And besides, it's not a real hunt. Just a drag. A drag? Following an artificial trail. Ah, a practice Miss Walcott and I are closely familiar with, Olivia. It sounds most intriguing, Sir Courtney, but Miss Pigeon and I have much still to do. Oh, don't worry about that. The police will be here this afternoon. They'll soon sniff out the culprit. Mm, perhaps sooner than they think. We'll see you this afternoon, then, Sir Courtney. Two o'clock on a large party. Aha. Excellent. What? Don't you see, Pigeon? A hunt. A hunt? Yes, an ideal chance to do what we came for. Right. Are all the clues laid, Pigeon? Yes. The bicycle is upside down in the ha-ha. Three feet away is a page torn out of the Calcutta Railway timetable. And inside the house is a false moustache pasted to the back of the bust of the Duke of Wellington. You didn't forget the stockings in the Iphigenia clock. Oh. oh, never mind. We have enough to make a case. And the other matter. I have laid a second drag, more strongly scented than the first, over to the west. That should lead Sir Courtney straight to his quarry. Huh? The one with the 60-foot limestone cliff. Ah. Hey, you sure you won't change your mind, ladies? Thank you, no, Sir Courtney. It all seems terribly dangerous. Uh, nonsense. Perfectly safe, so long as you keep a sound head on your shoulders, Walk Carver. Yes. Uh, neck too lively for you? Nope. How many fingers am I holding up? Yes, exactly. Pure hello! <laughs> Keep up, Horace! Yeah! That's right, Sir Courtney. Lead from the front. Goodbye! We watched the swarm of pinks disappear over a prune-purchased hill. It was a stirring sight, made all the more so by the knowledge that Sir Courtney would never see Massingbird Hall again. Aha! Uh -huh. They're back. Wake up, Pigeon. Hmm? What? Remember, we know nothing. About what? That's the idea. Now compose yourself. Here's Horace. Who's Horace? Messingbird's son. Miss Walcott, Mrs. Pigeon, that, that, that has been the most terrible, horrible, ghastly accident. Oh, really? Goodness. It really is the most awful thing. Oh, you poor boy. What has happened? Captain Carver. He's been killed. Oh, no. With your poor mamma, who recently passed away, you are now... Captain Carver? Yes. A wire stretched between two elms took his fine military head clean off his shoulders. Did you do that? No. Well, it wasn't me. Oh, funny. What fiend could find it in his soul to perpetrate such a cowardly and heinous affront to heaven? Believe me, Horace, we shall do our utmost to find out. Ah, afternoon, ladies. Splendid ride. A shame about old Carver. Still... You think of something to take your mind off it, eh? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, what's the matter? You look as if you've seen a ghost. It was clear that our designs on Sir Courtney were being obstructed by an unwitting rival in murder. It was the rummest case we'd ever perpetrated, and a solution seemed further away than ever. Still, at least Massingbird Hall had its consolations. Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor... Ooh, no, don't fancy that. More prunes, please, Quelch. Certainly, madam. Ah. Tinker, tailor, soldier, tailor. Oh, this is impossible. Ritson, Everybody's dying except Sir Courtney. Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor. And the whole situation Ritson, is getting thoroughly perverse. Woman. Not knowing who this mysterious murderer is could bring our scheme to utter ruin. I thought we decided the butler did it. Oh, thank you, Quelch. No, I'm talking about the real murderer. Until we know who he is, it would be unsafe to continue with our own design. I don't understand. A tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor. We may have to do some genuine detective work. Oh, uh, but we haven't done that since the adventure of the easy solution. Exactly. We're stumped. Unless. Quod tibi nihil redendum, sibi falcus, falernium quisqui. Oh, jolly good. What's it mean? Nothing. It's gibberish. That's how much trouble we're in. Oh, golly. 
Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor. Oh, dash it all, Pigeon. Rich Will you quit man, that but... blithering racket? No. Oh. Just a moment. Say that again. But you just told me to stop it. Never mind. What was it? Tinker, tailor... Soldier, sailor, rich man, poor man... Beggar man, thief... Brilliant. Oh, thank you. I didn't make it up, you know. These murders are taking place according to a scheme. Don't you see? Captain Carver, he's a soldier. Mr. Taylor, he was, well, a tailor. And then there was the tinker. What do you mean? Nobody's killed a tinker. Did you not notice the dead tramp who's been cluttering up the grounds these past few days? Certainly. And might not a tramp be described as a type of tinker? Why, gosh, yes. So, we have a tinker, then a tailor, then a soldier, and then what, pigeon? What comes next? Uh, pettifors. No, you do not come near. The next victim in this murderous pageant shall, there is no doubt, prove to be a sailor. Ah! But who's killing all these people? And why? It doesn't matter, don't you see? After sailor comes rich man, and the richest man for seven leagues in any direction is Sir Courtney Massingbird. I see. All we have to do is bide our time, and the deed is done for us by whatever madman is behind all this. Oh. In that case, I'll have some more proofs. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, Horace. Can I press you to a prune? No, uh, no, I'm not, not of a prunous disposition just now. Uh, are you any nearer unmasking the fiend that has been staining our verdant acres a murderous red? I, I fear for my father's life. Don't trouble yourself, my boy. The matter is very firmly in hand. Then you've solved it. Well, the matter is in hand. I knew it. <gasps> a gun. Yes, a gun. It was me all along. I had hoped to remain undetected, but you, the most famous detective in junior academe, you were much too clever for me. Why, what has she done? Yes, if it hadn't been for you, Miss Walcott, I'd have got away with it. Got away with what? Ha <laughs> ha, you don't fool me with your feigned fat-headedness. I've no need to feign, sir. You knew that I hated Carver. Carver? Ever since that bloody day at Khartoum when he sent me into the thickest press of battle, hoping that I would be slain, that he might thrust his fleshly attentions upon my dear fiancé, uh, Miss Letitia Plummer of the Gables Wimbledon. But... The Lord ensured my survival, that I might be the agent of his wrath against that sinner, the odious Carver. What? Captain Carver? Yes. Is this not a concise digest of your findings? Yes. Then you must die. I mean, no. We didn't know any of that. Didn't have a clue. Ah. Well, well, you have now. So, so still you must die. Uh, 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 one moment before you do that. Uh, what of the tinker and the unfortunate Mr. Taylor? Ah. Therein lies the genius of my plan. I had hoped to veil my motive by making Carver's death one of a nightmarish sequence. But that's... Thus would the police be thrown off my scent and on to that of some imaginary lunatic. Surely... But thanks to you, my plans have been cast awry. The Cherbourg packet sails at nine, but before that, I must ensure that any intercourse between you and the constabulary is placed beyond the realm of possibility. Sir, it already is. Pardon? You see... We wish you to continue. Continue? Yes, Horace, feel free to carry on. Well, at least as far as the rich man. What? No, no, the sequence is finished. To continue would be a needless waste of innocent life. Not so. Not needless. If you would kindly lay that weapon aside, I have a suggestion that may be of some interest to you. That afternoon, Miss Walcott and I made an arrangement that would see our task through to a successful conclusion and save Horace's neck from the noose. So, Pigeon, you've been married. Where does one find a sailor? Oh, I don't know. I'm given to believe they frequent public houses. Ah. Where do you want a sailor? Oh, Tinker Taylor, soldier, sailor, rich man. Oh! Well, hello there, ladies. Ow! <laughs> Seen Horace anywhere? Uh, no, we uh, uh, saw him this afternoon, but not since. A queer. Hmm. I shall inspect the pergola. Sir Courtney, mm -hmm. is there a public house in the neighbourhood? Why, yes, there's the ash tree at Galabra. It's a bit rough, though. So much the better. That's right. <laughs> Nothing like a drink to loosen your stays. <laughs> uh, beg your pardon. Ten o'clock tonight. Remember, the door's unlocked. Oh! <laughs> Missed. Oh! My America, the ladies all swoon when I bring it to town. It's long and it's thick and it cuts off a crown. 
Love people, Lord. Good evening, landlord. Good evening. We'll have our usual, please. Who are you? Oh, sorry. Uh, two quinine waters, please. I wonder if you might help us. We're looking for a sailor. <laughs> a what? A sailor. Well, you won't find one round here. We're 50 miles inland. Blast. Oh, well. Down the hatch. We killed the landlord, dressed him in a sailor suit, and positioned him in the massing bird arboretum. But this is monstrous. Once more innocent blood is spilled. It was simply a means to an end, sir. An end to which you had ineluctably impelled us. Uh, the end. That is where all wrongs shall be righted. Anyway, it was our plan that any blame for the crime should be laid with Horace. Yes, where was Horace? All in good time, sir. All in good time. In the interim, Miss Walcott and I hurried to keep our tryst with the lascivious baronet. We tiptoed gingerly to Sir Courtney's room, and then... Yes? Well, what happened next? This. <laughs> oh, oh, ladies! Ladies! Oh, ah, ah, ah. He succumbed to a coronary seizure before we set foot in the room. Oh, I mean good. Metaquam vis obliqui attincta erat. I beg your pardon? Our goal, though indirectly, had been achieved. The next morning, Horace's body was discovered in the library. Aha, so you were responsible. Next to a note explaining his reason for the Massingbird murders. Evidently, his father had cut him off from his dried fruit fortune, leaving him without a prune stone to his name. Having dispatched Sir Courtney Massingbird, what more fitting culmination could there be to his grim cycle than the murder of a poor man, and what poor man was closer to hand than Horace Massingbird himself? Ah, not very convincing, is it? No. Still, justice has been brought to a brace of vipers, father and son. But surely the police would have some questions to ask of you, hmm? Indeed they had, sir. Indeed they had. Hurry up, Pigeon. The carriage is here. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's these iced plum cakes. Oh, thank you, Quelch. Goodbye. Goodbye, madam. Onwards, driver. Uh, just one moment, ladies. Oh, uh... Ah, Inspector. We're just on our way. Oh, I'm sure you can spare me a moment. I just feel you may know more about this business than you've heretofore disclosed. Well, I am a celebrated detective, after all. Yes, we are. Uh, that was not my meaning. Remember the affair of the murdered subjunctive? The case of the irregular ending? Why, yes, but... And now this? How queer that you should be here in the wake of not one, but six suspicious deaths. Well, what's the problem, Inspector? You've got your man, haven't you? Uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Horace's body appeared in the library this morning, but the doctor assures me he's been dead for a day and a half. A very lively corpse, wouldn't you say? Well, we, uh, 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 that is... Uh... There's a perfectly simple explanation, Inspector. Inspector, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Inspector Beggarman at your service, madam. And this is my assistant, Constable Thief. Oh. Oh, really? How very convenient. <laughs> The Fall of the Mausoleum Club, Episode 4, The Prune Stone, was written by Ian Brown and James Hendry, starring Norman Bird, Jonathan Cecil, Peter Howell, Anthony Jackson, Peggy Mount, Hugh Paddock, Michael Ripper, John Savident, and Dorothy Tutin. Music by Max Harris. The producer was Paul Spencer.